we get super bitchy old queen this week with our opinions about Madonna, Lady Gaga, Harry Styles, Will and Jada, and some really cool ideas about cross-dressing kids. In boutique. We may be awful, but, but we're, we're right. right. <laughs> I'm kind of horrified because, you know, I follow Madonna on Facebook, right? And, oh, right. you know, because I'm huge fan big you know as you know i've been obsessed with her not from the beginning because i didn't like her at the beginning but i think my madonna fandom started in when the song live to tell came out oh yeah that sounds about right and because my second boyfriend ever this guy named jeffrey small (laughs) i was so in love with him and I heard that song on the radio and I liked it, but at the time I was Mr. Goth. (laughs) So I would not be seen going into the record store buying a Madonna record. Of course not. What would people say? (laughs) I know. Well, I know that's so stupid, but anyway. (laughs) Um, So Jeff bought the 12 inch single of Live to Tell for me. And I ended up losing my virginity to that song. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Yeah. <gasps> and that's probably, the, considering the lyrics of the song, it's probably apropos because he <laughs> broke he broke my heart and kind of fucked me over really, really bad. Well, they, do, they tend to do that, the ones who we lose our virginity to. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, so then after that, I started becoming like more into Madonna and I remember like I would even dress different just to go to the store to buy Madonna records and then go home and change <laughs> <laughs> which I know is really stupid but then by the time I got in when I was in college uh-huh. <laughs> and I moved to Santa Cruz the Like a Prayer album had just come out Oh, God. Now, see, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that might have been the beginning of it. But you were so hardcore at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And then when Like a Prayer came out, I was just full on proud, fanatical Madonna fan. And then I started, then I got obsessed with her earlier three records, you know. Right. Right. True, True Blue, Like a Version, and her tragically terrible first album, you know. Uh huh. I mean, it had some good songs on it, but it's, it's really, sh- fine. really 80 shitty. <laughs> it's fine. It's, you know, it's not art. It's club yeah. crap stuff. Yes. But I thought, like, Like a Prayer is, like, fucking art. Sure. And that is, like, an amazing fucking record. And I was just full on in. And I was so, and I remember I got up at five in the morning to go wait in line for tickets to go see her Blondie Ambition tour. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. And I cried because I couldn't get tickets. They were sold out. I remember I was that. too far back in line, and I actually cried. I remember that. I wanted that to was... go so bad. And it was, and, and, you know, kids today, y'all don't get it. Y'all do not, y'all think that having to refresh a window on your phone or click a button on your phone more than two times is working hard to get a ticket. You, you guys don't understand like camping out to, st- to be in oh, line yeah. for you a fucking ticket. You had to ticket. like camp out in front of the supermarket Yeah, to go to the ticket booth at the supermarket to buy concert tickets. Or your mother being so wonderful that she stood in line for you to get culture club tickets. You know, my mom did that in 1984. Oh, no, that's fabulous. Right, after, no we, right after we moved here. 
because Culture oh, Club came here within the first awesome. like six months or so after we got here. And my mom, she was going to go with us and then she pawned us off on some guy. Uh, what did she buy? Did she buy them at HEB probably? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. The grocery I store. remember that's where the KISS reunion, I remember that's yep. where we got our tickets, HEB and the supermarket. Goddamn right. Goddamn right. It $35. Was... Yeah, but anyway, so oh my I, god! It's so funny that I remember thirty-five dollars anyway. <laughs> and you know the video, and I don't even know how I got a videotape of that concert in the eighties. I mean, while it was current, I have no idea how I got my hands on the videotape of that concert. Oh yeah. But I watched it over and over and over and over because it's an amazing fucking tour, and I'd mm-hmm. never seen anything like it. Yeah. And she was the top of her game, and it was yeah. like pure fucking art. Yeah. You know, and then she changed and then she was good and then she was weird and then she was good. But now, girl, now, now oh. I see things online that she posts and one, she looks so stupid and ugly with her fake lips. I, I. I don't know what's going on with her face, honestly. It's like so ugly with her face. It's fake like she's lips. wearing a bad Madonna mask. I don't and understand it. With her stupid hair that she obviously has her maid fucking iron her hair every day. It's so stupid. Oh my god, it's just I, I, I don't even understand. And I, I know truly, a lot uh, yeah. I know a lot of it is like uh filters. Oh, but sure. her fucking lips, her fucking lips. And yeah. it's, she's posting all this stuff. And I mean, I'm not saying like one thing. Every fucking thing that she posts is making me cringe. Because oh, it's, it's yeah. so affected and so fake and so artificial. And yeah. so to try to make her seem artsy and interesting and she's really not anymore you, you know what you know how it makes because it, it's yeah. so fucking fake and and what bothers me and i was never at the level you are never i yeah. was never at the fan level you are but i the one thing that i would always appreciate about her was that she was like i am who i am and fuck you and and it, that was authentic yes, at the time. Authenticity was, I always felt like her number one thing. And and I could appreciate, even when her music would change from time to time, like she would change styles. I can appreciate that because what I listen to changes. Like I could appreciate wanting to play with new things and try new oh, things. Oh, yeah. And so it's like that didn't bother me because it's like, you know, I, I always I always joke, you know, I, I know I always bring up the Egyptian lover, but like, you know, if you're going to make basically the exact same album every year, you know, every album you put out from 1983 until now sounds exactly the same, does that mean you have extreme levels of artistic integrity or does that mean that you don't really know what you're doing or what? Or does or if if your if your music sounds different over time, does that mean that you are more of an artist? Like, you know, like there's there's an argument to be made either way, you know? Yeah, yeah. But so the fact that she would her her fashion would change and her music would change and whatever, it could still be authentically her. Like I could I could accept change in her, but I'm starting to feel like maybe looking back because she's so utterly fake right now. Like I, I mean, she should be one of those women who just allows herself to age. Oh yeah. She should be, this is what 60, what is she? 63, 64. This is what 63 looks like motherfucker. And you know, this is, you know, if she wants to work out every day, fine, go ahead. I don't care. If she wants to be all macrobiotic or whatever bullshit, she can do whatever she wants. But if she's going to have her face 
surgically removed and replaced with someone else's fucking face. Because I swear to God, that's what she's done. Oh, she looks she, so stupid. She doesn't... She barely looks like herself. She looks like that that socialite from New York who tried to make herself look like a lion. I swear to God, that's what she reminds me of now. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or like every time I see now I'm now that I'm seeing all those pictures of Nicole Kidman in the trailer for the new um, Lucille Ball movie. And all mm -hmm. I can see is a, mo a woman whose face doesn't move. It's like that's that's what Madonna looks like to me now. Like she's too smooth. Like she had more wrinkles when she was 23 than she does at 63 because she's a she's a glob of filler. Well, and I have seen, you know, uh non-filtered pictures of her and she looks her age which is fine but a filter but should make you has, look good a filter but, shouldn't make you look like a basketball yeah but even you know without the filter i mean she looks fine she looks her age but she looks fine because that's fine but she still looks fake but even there she still has those stupid lips She's, yeah, she still looks like someone who's had way too fucking much work done and someone who's trying so goddamn hard that it's like, oh my God, you're not, you're not, just relax, woman. You're fucking Madonna. See, Take a that's breath. What I don't like, and I figure like, you know, and I've gone through phases like, so Like a Prayer, I loved more than any, and I still love that album. That's still right. one of my favorite albums of anybody. Right. Is that album. And then Erotica came next. I hated Erotica. I absolutely yeah. despise that album and I still hate it. Yeah. The only song I like on that album is, I don't even know if you've heard it, but there's a song called Thief of Hearts. That doesn't sound funny. And she does this little thing where she goes, bitch. And then, you know, she, you do it, you take it, you screw it, you fake it. And I love when she says, bitch, you can hear glass breaking. It's like you can just picture her throwing a martini glass at some, some whore <laughs> that she's fighting with. Oh my God! That's the no, I've never only heard thing that. I like. That's the only thing I like about that album. Oh, and Rain is on that album. Rain is a damn good fucking song. Offhand, I don't know. See, if, if I would have heard it, I would have heard it f from you playing it for me. Yeah. Because where else would I have heard it? But anyway, yeah. but I don't like that album. But yeah. anyway, and then the next one. Oh God, what was the next one? Anyway. I stopped caring for a while, and then Ray of Light came out. I was going to really... say, how many albums was before yeah. Ray of Light? I loved Ray of Light. Yeah. That was a fantastic album. Ray it was totally was really, different, really and it was authentic, and it was a great album. Yeah. I really liked the music album. It yeah. was authentic. It was a good album. And so this is where, okay, so was here's music my theory. The one, was music the one where she had the song with Justin Timberlake? And wasn't that that period? Or am I thinking of something else? No, that was the album after that. Okay. Because yeah. I, I loved that. I loved that yeah. album too. Or what so I then, heard of it. I liked her again. And then when American Life came out, I fucking love that album. Mm-hmm. I love every song on it. It is such an amazing, good record. So different from things that she's done before. And it was real. It was authentic. It was confessional almost. Mm -hmm. It was like an actual, like, confessional album. Well, Ray of Light was too. But anyway. Yeah, I never thought about it, but I, I could see that. Yeah. But American Life, fantastic record. It did not sell well for her. Right. Anyone else would be thrilled to get those numbers, but for her, it was a flop. And yeah. the tour for that was amazing. She did an awesome stage show, awesome tour. Anyway, because that record didn't sell, she decided, oh, I'm going to do gay bar dance music again. Right. And she came out with some really shitty fucking albums that were so fake and so bubblegum and so not coming from any place of intelligence and not and and albums that shouldn't be coming from someone of her age and her experience of her age exactly and because she's not say, 22 i like the mdna album i actually really like it i listen to the shit out of it 
but I like it the way I like the new kids on the block because it's stupid bubble gum and it's meaningless. Right. Like the way you like the Paris Hilton album. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was like, okay, Madonna, obviously you're doing this to sell more records because, you know, five million's not enough. Yeah. You know, and that really, really turned me off. And then. So anyway, not to go, anyway, so blah, 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 blah. And then she came with that horrible album that came out after that with the Rebel Heart. Piece of shit. Oh, God, I barely, I barely have any memories of it. Totally fake. Says nothing. There's nothing valid in it at all. It's just plain fucking bubble gum. Okay. Which True Blue was plain fucking bubblegum. But, but it, it was, was so great, good. <laughs> but it was a great album because that's where she was at the time. Right. It was this so cute. True Blue was so cute. Yes. This doesn't reflect where she is in her life, these albums, because she's making bubblegum on purpose to sell and to try to be like it's 1983 again. And I'm sorry, honey, it's not. Right. You know, so then comes Madam X. When I first saw her with the eye patch and stuff, I was like, oh, my God, how fucking stupid. What the fuck is she doing? That's actually kind of a good album. And the only reason that I like it at all is because I watched the stage show with it. And I thought the stage show was phenomenal. Oh, I don't think I've seen any of it. She only did new songs. She talked between them. She did small theaters. Oh, that's cool. No greatest hit shit. Not trying to do old blonde ambition stuff. She's yes. just doing... Okay, that's cool. So I respect that. So this show was awesome. And to respect her as an artist, she got into herself as an artist again with Madam X. She was in so much pain that whole fucking tour, she could barely move. Oh, and no, she really? fucking did it. Oh, no. She fucking did it. Was it like a that, lot of dancing and stuff? Is I that why? I think it, I want to say it was knees. Oh, man. But she was in agony. Was it knees or shoulders? But it's agony. A lot of respect. So I gained respect for her as an artist again, again because of Madam X, right? Wow. Because the la- the three albums she put before that were such shit. And they didn't, guess what? They didn't sell. Oh, my God. So maybe she's at the point now of like, okay, my albums aren't selling the way they used to anyway. So why don't I just do something real again? Yeah. Yeah. So for her to have that come to Jesus moment. Yeah. In her music career, it's really appalling to me that because of Facebook and Instagram, it's like her life is nothing but a fucking photo shoot. Oh, she's pausing, you know, in her, you know, artistically laid out casual nightgown with all these books around her Uh. on the bed. Like she's living like this, this bohemian 20 year old lifestyle where she's just reading all these intellectual novels Uh or she's posing in the bathtub in the bubble bath with some champagne because you know, she just lives like that every day. I mean, everything that she put is so fake. It's so photo shoot. And she's trying to pass it off as, Oh, this is my glamorous Hollywood life. It's so gross. Now, if she, if, if this shit, if social media had existed in the eighties when she was up and coming and she was doing stuff like that, I could understand it because she was building an image. You're already fucking Madonna. You don't have to do any of that. And I don't think anyone believes that it's real? I can't imagine anyone it's so believes stupid. it. It's stupid. It's like she's trying to be an influencer. And the fact of the matter is, everybody under the age of 40 thinks she's a stupid old cow and thinks she's a fucking joke. And doesn't she have like a 
like 20 year old boy toy or something yeah he's like 25 or so, oh, it's so i mean stupid. he's gorgeous i because i saw a picture of him the other day and i was like he doesn't oh, want to be all he doesn't want to be eating that wrinkly old 63 year old pussy give oh me God. a break there is and of course he's involved. like he's like a dancer and a musician or some shit you know what she, what she really should be doing i you know what i would really love i mean she she did did she start her own label for her own stuff or does she is she on someone else's label did, no she's on her own now i wait but, it may be defunct she had her own record label called maverick that's what I, I was trying to remember. And name. I know that that record label started to do good because it was Alanis Morissette. Right. Because that's see, because to me, and I think I'm that's not what sure, she should be doing. I think Maverick may have tanked. I honestly don't know. I haven't paid enough attention in those years to her to know because I thought she was so stupid. But I'm, I'm willing to bet that if she had focused on developing and supporting other women and bringing other women up in through her using using her label that could have been a huge part of her legacy and that could be what she's doing now i mean that would have been oh yeah that Um, that could have ended up being what she was known for more than almost anything because she could have, she could have discovered and created all these amazing artists that the world might not have known otherwise because Madonna had the power to, to put them in front of us back when, you know, YouTube couldn't just accidentally drop someone in front of you. You know, and I think, like I said, the Madam X thing She's back to doing art for the sake of art. And I think she realizes her albums aren't going to sell. But she did so many years of shit. She is a joke. Everybody, nobody young likes her. They all think that she's just this stupid old has-been who looks stupid and dresses stupid and acts stupid. I understand the eye patch and the costumes on stage. But she's a sixty-three-year-old woman, a mother of what five kids? Yeah, I think it, I think. And it's that she's many, yeah. spending all of her time trying to be like this artistic whore on Instagram. It's really gross. And you know what's what's occurring to me right now? Because like like you know like before I was talking about the authenticity thing, but now I'm feeling like. I used like you know like I used to think of her as like a level of self confidence that you know was admirable and that we could all aspire to be like as confident and as you know be- as have you know believing in yourself as much as Madonna did. I'm starting to wonder if she is literally desperate for attention. Yeah, because to me, MDNA and Rebel Heart are proof that she's just as insecure as the rest of us. Yeah, because Because she could literally stay at home and just be Madonna and live her life and be happy. Yeah, because I guarantee you, her heart was not in making those shitty pop albums. But she needed to be in front of us somehow. Her heart was in making American Life. Like, yeah, if she just waited until she actually had something to say... Yeah, and I think her yeah. heart was in Madam X. Yeah. So it's really, really weird that her personal life, like, take care of your kids and talk about your philanthropy work and talk about your work for the gay community because I know she still does all this stuff. Right. Why doesn't she talk about that instead of posing in a negligee in front of her makeup mirror to look glamorous? It's so stupid. She literally already is a brand. She doesn't need to create a brand anymore. She is a brand. She's fucking Madonna. All she has to do is do... Her job isn't looking like something anymore. Her job is being Madonna. And she can... It. Her job doesn't have to be, look at my tits. She's yeah, fucking just, 63 I mean, years old. 
And I know she's trying to compete in the Instagram world. But she doesn't need to. And wanting to be an influencer. But girl, you're too fucking old. Stop. Just be an artist. Right. And live your life. Focus on your fucking kids and just stop. Oh, my God. Because she is. She's a joke. She doesn't know it, but she's a fucking joke. And she would do just fine on Instagram or whatever if she would have it be about things that were real. She doesn't have to do the artificial thing that people who don't actually have anything real to offer have to do. I know. And it's just, anyway. Oh, it's, oh God. It just, it makes me so mad because now, now you, now obviously you've always been a much, I mean, you're, you're the Madonna fan and I'm the Madonna appreciate from a distance. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Does it make you, (laughs) does it make you look back and wonder if, if you were missing something? Like if maybe there was something all along that I, I, like she was fooling you. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know. Or did she just lose herself somewhere along the way maybe i think she just lost it somewhere along the way i mean she's notoriously has always been a cunt always been horrible to people she works with she's always been nasty to fans she's a notorious bitch and she always has been oh, even was back she? then was she nasty oh to yeah fans? oh i didn't know i was like i said i was never paying attention to her really there's this infamous story during the true blue tour some little gay boy went up to her and gave her a bouquet of roses because he got to meet her backstage right. somehow. And she sniffed it and threw him in the garbage right in front of him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Especially even back then. I mean, she was huge back then. And then, then but I that remember was... there's, there's a scene during uh, Truth or Dare. Especially a little gay boy. Um. Somebody had sent her a painting that she had painted for Madonna. Mm-hmm. And she opened it up and made fun of it and said how horrible it was with this woman's name and fucking put it in the movie. Now, that's a fucking bitch. Oh, my God. I thought maybe I didn't actually watch the movie all the way through. Maybe I just saw scenes from it. Oh, the I, movie's intolerable. Because it I actually, would have remembered that. I, the that movie would have really made me did so mad make that I would, me not like her. Yeah, that would have made me so think mad. I've ever, I don't think I ever would have actually liked her in real life. I'm sure she's always just been horrible. Wow. Um, but at the time... The message was positive. She was so strongly pro-gay, and that's... That was so impossible back then. All celebrities are pro-gay now. Um, Oh, I know. It doesn't... People don't understand it now. It meant something back then. People don't understand that she, like, created a ruckus for being pro-gay back then, and that meant a lot. Yeah, she... You could lose... You could lose a fan base by being pro-gay back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, now you get, like, country stars coming out as gay or bi or whatever, and they actually have a shot at keeping their fan base. Yeah. You know. You know, but back then, and I mean, looking back, maybe, I know she pushed boundaries for the sake of social justice, but how much it w- how much of it was for attention... It, there's a fine line there, and it, it, we'll never really know. Yeah, I guess some of it was a bit self. Whereas now yeah. she's just, for now she's just a stupid old woman that needs to shut the fuck up. You know. <laughs> oh, man. The year of self care. This episode is long. And I know you want to get back to that discussion, ASAP. So I'm going to get right to the point on this one. Sometimes it's hard to be nice to yourself. A lot of us are so deep in the habit of talking shit to ourselves that we barely know how to treat ourselves decently. Hence a lot of our problems with self-care, right? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Go find an old photo of yourself. 
And I mean old enough that you were different then. Maybe it was from before something big that happened to you. Or maybe it was taken right in the middle of when you were going through some stuff. I want you to look at that person in the photo. Think about who they are. The things they don't know yet. The things they think they can't do. I want you to look them in the eye and tell them they're going to be okay. Tell them they're going to survive a lot of shit. Tell them things will seem really bleak and they'll get tired and sometimes they'll feel like they won't make it. But you know they will. Because you did. And now, you know, now that I've, now that my my narcissism dar is so is so much more finely attuned if i paid more attention to her i wonder i wonder how much of my how much of the narcissism boxes she would tick if i went back oh probably all of them probably i gotta say her stage shows have always been even when her music was shitty her stage shows have always been phenomenal because that's her thing yeah but man, she's come out with some shitty albums that were not authentic. And you can tell. I think she has a good authentic voice, but I think her ego has gotten in the way of her it forever. And she's just a bitch. Man. And I'll bet anything that that hasn't changed. Oh, God. Know? Oh, God. But anyway. Oh. It's so yeah, but it's like it's embarrassing for me. Yeah. It's embarrassing to be a Madonna fan. And it's sad cuz I don't think she doesn't know that she's a joke. Right. And she doesn't know that young people hate her. And that every I I I think she's I honestly think she really doesn't know. I think she's sheltered from all of it. Yeah. And you know what's weird? It's like back then I was, I was, well, I was recently listening to an interview with Cindy Lauper and cause you know, you know, like back, back in the day, like in, in the eighties and, and Cindy even brought this up in the, in the interview that music in general was such a man driven industry yeah. that it was almost as if no one was allowed to like more than one female artist. And so mm -hmm. you had to either like Madonna or Cindy Lauper. You couldn't like both. And it it was, I mean, you and I, like, you were the Madonna person. I was the Cindy Lauper person. Yeah. It was very easy to categorize us that way. But what's And it was weird, weird though, because yeah. their fan base, when you look at their music now, it's not that different. There's a the huge 80s. amount of crossover, but at the time it was but like we were pitted against were, each other. Yeah, the audiences were so different. Like Cindy Lauper was the new the new wave people. Right. And Madonna was the popular rah rah girls. Right. That became the gross Madonna wannabes. Right. But it it's was It's like the girls who would have been like the straight laced girls who were like, Oh, I'm going to dress like a slut now. Yeah. But it was like the popular girls <laughs> yeah. liked Madonna and the weird the artsy weird new the age art, the girls art students liked Cindy Lauper. Liked exactly. Cindy Lauper. Even exactly. though when you listen to their records back then, now they're both bubble gum. Pop. They're bo yeah. They're all very bubble gummy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but the weird thing is like, you look at Cindy Lauper now Cindy Lauper, I mean, she still colors her hair crazy colors. She still dresses crazy. But the thing is, she looks great. I don't think she's had, I don't think she's had work yeah, done. Yeah, and I don't she's the you know. age that she is. Yes. And she's fine with that. Yes. And she's have. she is totally living her best life. And she is just, you know. She is just out there being fabulous. And what, what is, is it? Psoriasis? What is it? Is, I, I know it's something that disgusts you, but she has. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was on those commercials for. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Something like that. And she yeah. has some sort of skin thing. Yeah. And she does commercials for her skin thing. 
And she's just, she's still out there just being the cutest thing ever. And she's just, she's so smart and she's so wonderful. And she was also another, another incredibly gay, positive, wonderful, oh, yeah. you know, you know, but, but she, I can't think of a misstep that she, she never did anything obnoxious. No, she never did uh-uh. anything like self-serving stuck up anything she just always seemed like the nicest person imaginable always oh yeah and you know and i know her record sales have tanked and but i think she realized that that's okay because she's She's still doing her thing and she's fine and she's true to herself i wish madonna could have learned that lesson yeah she she did you know she she did she did kinky boots on broadway she's you know she's made all sorts of friends you know through the theater and she's still very new york and she's so you know she's she's having a great time you know oh yeah i would i mean oh i'd love to live cindy lopper's life and the thing that bothers me about madonna her public message has always been about loving yourself and accepting yourself and accepting your life and she always yeah. talks about, oh, her humble beginnings and blah, 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 blah. Right. How can she be sending that message out if she if her goal in life is to compete on Instagram with a bunch of 19-year-old influencers? Like, how is that making people feel good about themselves? By putting fucking fucking diamond grills on her teeth and bathing in champagne. It's like, fuck it's, you. It's just fuck so... Fuck you with this nonsense. Ugh. You know, and it's like... Uh, but I guess I've always been that way, too. Like, I just... I guess Madonna's been always very couture. And Cindy Lauper has been very thrift store. I, yes, that's a perfect way of putting it. And... I hate couture. I think yeah. it's stupid. I think it's ugly. I think it's yeah. pointless. That Madonna started money out money down the toilet to be pretentious. So maybe I just don't get it. I, right. I, I don't know. Like Madonna don't know. started out dressing thrift story, but the second that she could get, you know, fucking Gautier or whatever, the second mm-hmm. she could get someone to dress her, she never wore anything but couture again. Whereas Cindy Lauper totally dressed like me always. Yeah. <laughs> look, she ne- look, she was my fashion icon my entire fucking life. <laughs> yeah. And I mean I understand couture in the sense of art. for the runway. Because it's art. It's a form of art. Yes. Because it's a form of art and, you know, but it's really fucking lame to live your life in couture. Right. Because you it's still just, shit like everybody else. It's just stupid. Yes. Know? Yes. <laughs> and yes. I remember there's some hideous song on one of the Madonna albums with Nicki Minaj rapping on it. And it's something about, you know, them bragging about how much money they have and look at these expensive shoes I'm wearing, bitch. You can't afford these shoes because you can't get these at Aldo. Look at my expensive shoes. Right. And it just kind of turned my stomach, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because Madonna would have never sang about shit like that. Not in the old days. Hell no. Back in the old days. No. No, because that would have been that would have been incredibly bad taste you know she thinks she's a fucking socialite and she's fucking madonna you know she ain't a socialite (laughs) exactly i mean not that that's you know being a socialite is totally gross but you know what i mean oh yeah exactly anyway (laughs) so yeah oh god madonna shut up And I know there's still a lot of people that love her and like every she'll post these hideous pictures and all these stupid old queens will be like, yes, my queen. Yes. I know. Yes. Oh, my God. No. Yeah. What's what's the what's the queenie way of spelling? No. What's the yes version of no. But all these stupid drag queens want to be like these 
fake couture queens anyway, so I guess they think she's fabulous. I know. You know, but I, you know, that's why, I mean, I hate drag now because of all this couture, real girl shit, you know, <laughs> but that's, that's a whole different topic. Oh my God. <laughs> Thrift store drag is so good. Yeah. Anyway. If, if you didn't steal it, it's not drag. <laughs> oh, right. Oh God. I'm sure the, you know, the couture queens, I'm sure they, you know, they're oh my God. drag queens. I, I do remember when my ex was doing his dissertation. Yeah. And we spent all that time in Houston going to all those drag shows and hanging yeah. out with all the drag queens there and interviewing them and stuff. All I will say, maybe it's different now. I doubt it. And oh, I kind of sure hope it it's not because it's kind of fabulous. Drag's so mainstream now. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But they were all, because they were all poor. Yes. And they were all thieves. They all stole from each other. They all shoplifted. They <laughs> Austin did too. Oh yeah, and that's the fucking truth. And you know, it's so it's kind of fabulous. <laughs> oh god. Oh, absolutely. It I was. I always did kind actually of actually fabulous. There was there was a part of me that there was there was a part of me that did kind of fantasize of having my own house. You know, house of Amelia or whatever. You know. Yeah. Ha- having <laughs> having my having my own. If I if I could have. If I could have somehow had had a had a place back then, the, where I could just have all the little drag queens come live with me. Oh, I, I know, but them. I mean, let's I mean let let's call a spade a spade. You would have been dealing with a bunch of thieving cokeheads. I know, know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> let's call a spade a spade. Because I would have I would have somehow I would have somehow had to. I mean, because I would have because I really I don't like people who are fucked up. I don't like yeah. being around people who are tripping. I don't like people around people who are fucked up on various substances. I don't like being around people who are really drunk. So it would be really hard to do that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, maybe it's different now. I don't know. <laughs> but back then, ooh, honey. But anyway. See, but, see, <laughs> but see, that's the beauty of now. The beauty yeah. of now is that now you have all these like little kids that are into drag i could start house of amelia and get them when they're like 10 years old oh my god see that start them on the right path of of drag is life and and you know keep them on the straight and narrow so to speak but you know do drag right oh i know i think boys should get their first pair of pumps at age 10 they gotta at least start practicing, because you know, like little, you know, like little girls play dress up sets. Always come with those little, those little cheap plastic high heels, so little girls could start, pla- you know, walking in like little one, one and a half inch heels. Little boys should start practicing in those yeah. too when they're like five. God damn it, we all had to start somewhere. I think you know, and not for anything. I think it should be like mandatory, like several days a year in the school year mandatory cross-dressing only to break down the barriers of because what does it really fucking matter boys clothes girls clothes it's so fucking stupid outside of a bra or a jock strap there really shouldn't be any different clothes are clothes yeah and i think they should make kids cross-dress like three or four times a school year every day so they get over the discomfort of it they get over this gender bullshit and just see I what mean, each other looks like. <laughs> see and, what each oh other God, looks like. In the you end. know, one million mothers would just have me hung for suggesting that. Well, the weird thing is, but I think you could still actually, wear a shirt I, and a pair of pants and get yeah, away with it, but people would still find a way I never even really thought upset. about that until just now, but I think that's a really good idea. Not to force them to be gay or lesbian or trans or right. bi or anything. Just wear a different kind of shirt. But, yeah. like... Boys should wear like a you know girl girls clothes, like a pink shirt with a unicorn on it. It's not going to kill you. They have to just to get over this bullshit. Right. It doesn't make you any less a boy because you're wearing this shirt. And I think that would be really, really. It could be like Spirit Week, like Spirit Week at at school. Like, okay, today's the day we all wear a hat. Today's the day we all we all wear clothes of the opposite gender. (laughs) And I think the Why first the couple that? times the boys would be assholes and they would make fun of each other and they would go to this I mean for blah 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 and I'm a sister blah blah blah. 
But I think as they were forced to do it, they would start looking forward to it and like it. Well, because and there'd be, there'd be more of a comfort level. Especially if people really praised the ones that really went for it. Because yeah. they understood the assignment, and I did that with the with a I wiggled my neck and everything when I said that, because the ones who like wimped out and just kind of you know wore jeans and a t shirt and said what girls wear jeans and a t shirt, but the ones who really went for it, if they got really praised and the so like the the next time around the the you know more boys like really went for it because they got more attention that way, it's like hey twirly skirts are fun. It's fun to spin around and wear in a skirt. I know. I think, I mean, could you imagine, like, all the pissed off fathers they would be? All the, you know, the macho football fathers. Oh, my God. They would just so not be down for that. But, but you know, younger, but you know what's really beautiful? Although I bet younger fathers would totally be down for it, actually. But what's, a lot of them. But what's really wonderful is how many fathers a lot of the kids would find out really fast that their that their father isn't that asshole and so yeah. later on yeah. if they did have something to talk to their dad about they would know yeah. that their dad was cool with it because a lot of people assume the worst mm-hmm. because a lot a lot of a lot of guy i mean i mean men are getting better at realizing you need to say some stuff out loud. You can't just assume people know you're cool with things. You have to actually say things in front of your kids yeah. sometimes, but you know, you can't assume your kid knows you're okay, but uh, it, it would give parents the opportunity to demonstrate their coolness to their kids. Yeah. You know, and that's why I admire Darren and Marco and Brian, my old landlord so much. Oh, yeah. Because they've always been to their kids. There's this, that, and the other. And whatever you want to do is fine, honey. And I love you. And do whatever the fuck you want. Because it's oh, yeah. all fine. And, we, and they've yeah, been we... very, very vocal about that. And that... Could you imagine, like, when we were growing up? Oh, hell no. That would have never been a thing. Oh, my God. You know, I my, my dad's favorite thing to call me when I was a kid was a skirt. Yeah. Well, there you go, acting like a little skirt again. Mm-hmm. Or what are you doing wearing that? You're twirling around here like a goddamn skirt. That's right. <laughs> well, your your dad was always super classy. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he was a special kind of asshole. But yes. that particular thing was... That was just how it was back then, and it's yeah. nice to know that that is, that is changing. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine if they did, like, a mandatory cross-dressing thing for sensitivity purposes in schools? All the pissed-off fathers? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It would really expose the parents who were complete assholes. It would really expose the, the future domestic violence cases, you know, the, you the know, people it's who like, were, yeah, yeah, no, it is not going to make your kid gay and it's not no. going to make your daughter a dyke. You yeah. Know? It's, yeah. It, 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 the only thing it might do is it might make your kid realize that clothes are just clothes and that, that, Dressing the way, however you feel most comfortable, is the way you should be dressing, you know, and it's just fine. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's great. And it's like, you know, I mean, this is a dumb question, but you, you do you know who Harry Styles is? Absolutely. Okay, because I kind of didn't until I saw his records at work yeah. and then just seeing articles about him and stuff. And I just was reading an article about what, was he on the cover of what was it Vogue or whatever cover was, he was on on a dress or something? I think it was. It may have been British Vogue, but yeah, he was. He was the first guy to be on the cover of Vogue in a dress. Yeah, but I read an article he's about very pretty. him. He's a very pretty. Oh boy. yeah, he's a good looking guy. I didn't know. I never heard of him. I didn't know who he was. He, but he anyway. was in One Direction. Okay, which I, I'm exactly. aware of their existence, but I, I don't know. know one of their I songs. Know. 
That's because I'm on social media and you're yeah. not. That's the only but reason. But I had read, so I read an article about him and it was about, they had all these pictures just from a long time and when he was in the boy band and yeah. everything. And he's always been an androg- androgynous dresser. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he was like, this is just what I like. And if people don't like it, fuck them. Why can't I wear a dress? I'm oh, he, not that, trying to be That's in part drag. of why he's adorable, is because he's just such a... He's adorable. And, um... Uh, Jaden Smith. Oh, another Will adorable Smith's one. son. Yeah. Who I think Wears is, dresses and skirts and shit yeah. all the time, just because. And I'm like, that's fabulous. He has you know? been for a long time. And yeah, I don't think that he's doing... I don't think he's doing it for attention. I think... I mean, I do think it's a sign of privilege that... He feels comfortable enough that he can do that without yeah, fear of being. Yeah, because who's going to mess with Jaden Smith? Who's going to mess with fear Will Smith's of being son? bullied? Right. But that level of privilege, and I'm air quoting that yeah. level of privilege, that needs to be everybody should have that. Right. But yeah, I think I think Jaden may may be non-binary. He may have come out as non-binary. I'm not a hundred percent sure on I that, know, but, but I feel I like. Think He's very fluid. I, I think that like. boy is fucking fine too. Have you seen Willow? Have you seen his sister? She's so I'm unbelievably for... gorgeous. I can't even handle it. She looks exactly like her father. As she, now that she's like I don't know, like in her early twenties now. Uh-huh. Oh my god, she's so she's so pretty. I can't handle it, and she looks just like her father. And I realize oh. that that's a, but I never. It's making me realize. I mean, I always thought Will Smith was incredibly cute, but I never realized how pretty he was. Oh, Will Smith was fine. Oh, I, I used know. to be so hot for him. Oh, I know, but I never realized that he had a feminine kind of pretty about him until I realized that she looks exactly like him. It's it's like oh. you'll have to look. I'll, I'll send you pictures of her later. She's so in, okay. She's yeah, because so again, I don't, I don't know. I don't pay attention. <laughs> well, okay. They have this. They have this thing called the red, the red table. Um, her, she and her uh, Jada and her and I guess Jada's mother do a, like a talk show on Facebook. Oh, that I, I watch from time that. to time. Yeah, and um, it's every so often it, they'll bring people on that just. Uh, yeah, because I'm very into Dr. Romani Dervasola, who's a, she talks about uh, narcissism and stuff a lot. And they have her on every so often as an expert on narcissism. And so that's how I ended up finding out about the show. But um, seeing Willow on there um, really, oh, and they did a really good one about um, Nisi Nash. You know how. You know how I love Nisi Oh, I Nash. read about that. Yeah, she can. I was like really surprised actually. Because remember, I used to love her because I used to, Remember, I always used to watch um, uh, whatever that that ha- home oh, makeover show was. Was it How Do I Look? Well, she was on she was on one of the home makeover ones that was also that was she was on one of the ones where they come over and clean out your house. But oh, she was oh that's but right. she was I think she was on a clothes one too. But she was on a, a house. Oh one. no, How Do I Look was that old that soap opera actress. Oh, was that Lisa That's Renna? That's who hosted How Do I Look. I think that was, was that Lisa Renna? No. No, that was, um, oh, fuck, um, I don't remember. I don't remember, but, oh, the Nisi Nash, yeah, it was, I used to watch her show all the time. I loved her, yes. And I absolutely love her, because she recently got married for a third time, but this time it was to a woman. I read about that, yeah. they were on the Red Table Talk, and that was so fucking good. They're, they're just the cutest. Oh, my God. They were, the, like, the cutest couple. And oh so my God. like, so Will Smith's wife, she's real liberal then. Oh, totally. Now, but what about Will Smith? Cause isn't he like Jehovah's witness or something? No, I think, I think there was a period where people were trying to get him sucked into Scientology, but that didn't take. Oh, Scientology. Yeah. Okay. So he's I mean, liberal he been, and everything to that. He would have been Will. one hell of a get for Scientology, but it, it didn't stick. Um, okay, I don't know why I thought it was Jehovah's Witness, but whatever. <laughs> and there's, they're one of those couples that, um, I'll I'll just say that uh, partly because of Red Table Talk, and partly because Jada is just so she will just say anything on that show, mm-hmm. and they they are very every so often they just blurt shit out about their marriage, and then it goes all over social media, and it's like the world is sort of going, you know what? Will and Jada, we don't we don't need to know stuff. 
about your marriage? Oh, we really don't. I saw, I've seen like snippets on Facebook about. And it's fine, them you know. Them talking about their sex lives or whatever. And I'm just like, really? And but I, mean, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't think they're talking I about it because they think on we it want to know. read it, but I was just like, yeah. But know. I think, I think that these things come up. I don't think they talk about it because they think we want to know about it. I think they talk about it because they're talking about a topic. They talk about shit for the same reason we talk about shit. They're I having a conversation. Say, you know, it's kind of bad for us to say, like, you know, we don't really want to hear that because we, we are look literally at the shit. talking right now. We talk about, like, we d- both define TMI. <laughs> exactly. We don't. We don't decide we're g- that the world really wants to hear certain things about us. But it's part of a conversation that we're having. And if you take a little snippet out, then people are like, "Well, why does Amelia think that people want to know that about her?" It's like I didn't think that at all. I'm just having a conversation here. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But anyway. Anyway, we are going way. We're going way on a tangent here. Oh, I know, but it's I think it's a fabulous it conversation. Is, it is good. Hey, this is Kate. I'm a forensic psychologist and crisis clinician, and I collect stories. Everything from true crime to trauma to parenthood. There's a lot more in common between depression and sociopathy or between serial killers and podcasters than you might think. Are you sure you really want to know? This is Ignorance Was Bliss at iwbpodcast.com and iwbpodcast on social media. I was going to bring up something, though, because we were um, we were talking about Madonna earlier, and mm-hmm. something that... Uh, Cause you were talking, you know, we were talking about like what Madonna used to represent and we were talking about like express yourself. Like, you know, exp- Madonna was all about express yourself and that's one of the yeah. greatest things Madonna ever did. And one thing, every time I think about express yourself, I can't help but think about the early, actually, honestly, I can't even say the early days of Lady Gaga because I'm willing to bet Lady Gaga was famous for five years before I even knew who the fuck she was. But when Born This Way happened, I think that may have been the first time I actually heard her. Uh And first thing I thought was, oh, someone's doing a cover of a Madonna song? And then it was like, oh no, that's a different song. And then it's, oh, okay, so this woman is trying to be Madonna? Like, I don't know who she is. And then I then I saw pictures of her. Like, I started finding out who she was. And it was like, I mean, I think it's fair to say that back then you and I were both like, oh, fuck Lady Gaga? Who the fuck does Lady Gaga think she is? Oh, totally. I thought she was re- lame. Yeah. And we both, I mean, even though, like... I was I would never have said back then that Born This Way was a bad song, but it made me mad that like the world didn't seem to be recognizing that it was a direct rip off of a Madonna song. I mean, it's like it was a good oh, song it because totally it was express yourself. Express yourself. I mean, no, the reason why fact, it was good was because it was ripping off a really great song. Yeah, I know, and it's funny because Madonna on one of the tours, and it may have been I, I, I don't remember whatever any whatever tour was on right after that Gaga album came out in the middle of express yourself on this tour Madonna went into born this way and back <gasps> into express yourself just as a like seamlessly fuck you to Lady Gaga yes <laughs> that's not, that's actually kind of fucking awesome that's fucking fantastic because they are the same fucking song. I mean, that's like doing Twist and Shout into La Bamba back into Twist and Shout. I mean, it's like they're the same. Yeah, song. it was. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty fabulous. I, and I love Born This Way. It's a fabulous song. I love the message of it. It's I like so it. Good. Yeah, It's so good. It's great. But the thing but the thing was like, like back then, every time I saw a picture, every time there was like watch, watching an award show and it's like, oh, here comes Lady, Lady Gaga. And it's like, what the fuck is she wearing? What the fuck? What the fuck? I, she made me angry. Every time I saw her, I was angry. And I, I'm not kidding. I recently, I recently saw an article 
where she was reminiscing about the meat dress. Do you remember the meat dress? I do. And I thought it was really fucking stupid. It was I so totally stupid. remember it. It was so stupid. And the, the thing was that, that I ended up reading this article because I was like, I was like, well, you know, she, oh, she's supposed to be like explaining, you know, what was behind the meat dress? What was the idea behind the meat dress? Because I just remember at the time just thinking it was gross and stupid because it was very much the, I, I at the time I couldn't help but feel if you really have talent, why are you trying so hard to get attention? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, you know, reminiscent of the kind of shit we're talking about, about Madonna right now. But I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to read because I just pulled it up. So even explaining it now, it doesn't make it sound like it, there was any purpose to it. Uh. She was talking about her makeup artist who, who had the idea. Her and I, Val Garland, her makeup artist, her and I worked together for a long time and she shared a story with me where she had gone to a party wearing sausages. And I thought this was quite funny. And I said, well, that's a great way to make sure that everybody leaves you alone at a party. Yeah. Now, I thought that was kind of funny. But okay, yeah. so it was like, but then she says she wants to make a political statement on this red carpet. And at the time, it was it was during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, so now she's about to explain what the meat dress has to do with that. Uh-huh. Gee, how how foolish of me. Why would I think that... Because, you know, when you're making high art like Lady Gaga thought she was making, I guess it's so obvious. Um, <laughs> so we decided to do the meat dress because I thought to myself, if we were willing to die for your country, what does it matter how you identify? This was ultimately designed by Frank Fernandez, but it was the brainchild of House of Gaga. And we were backstage with Brandon Maxwell, who was working with one of my style. So she's talking about this vegan guy who's, who's sewing bits of meat onto her and a meat hat and a meat purse and meat shoes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, um, I'm sorry. At no point is she explaining what the fuck, what was the political statement? So I she's know, saying, I think it was just like, look at me. Remember my fantasy of making lingerie out of steel wool. Yes. Because it was so outrageous. Because it was such an awful idea. Yes. And that's totally what it was. And why can't she just say that? Because that makes it even, uh, that makes it fabulous. I wanted to wear something that no one else would wear because it was so outrageous. That All she had to say was that. I wanted to wear something that no one would ever forget that everyone would be talking about the next day. If she had just said that. Yeah, then I would have thought it was great. But no, you know. she is saying, no, I wanted to make a political statement. But you didn't make a political statement because at the you're time, saying nothing. I think at the time she did not want to make a fucking political statement. She wanted to wear that meat the same way that I wanted to wear steel wool. Oh, my God. So, you know, and, and I want to and I and, and here's the thing. In recent years, both Pitney and I have had to come to terms with the fact Lady Gaga is actually really fucking talented and she seems oh, God, to be a yeah. really awesome person. It's like the complete opposite of the Madonna experience. It's like, I totally. <laughs> it's like yeah. we used to hate Lady Gaga. Like you, you, if you had talked to us back then, like 10 years ago, we hated her. Like, you couldn't have convinced us that she had any goddamn talent oh, at all. Oh, I hated her so much. I couldn't even look at her. Like, there was one time she was dressed all in red, and it was like this red lace thing, and she had her face covered up. And I, I didn't even think she was pretty. Like, I thought, well, she obviously has to cover her face everywhere she goes because she's so fucking hideous. Like, I, well, I mean, hated she's her not so pretty. much. She, no, she's pretty. <laughs> she's pretty. She's just, she, but she wears her makeup so stupid. She can't, I, 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 whoever puts eye makeup on her needs to cut it out. Because when she looks more normal, and doesn't have 10 tons of makeup on. She's very pretty. Like when she, it was when her Joanne album came out 
and she just looked normal and she was acting normal and she when she just sits at a piano and sings a song it's the greatest thing in the world and she should do that all the time and she should stop trying to do all this other shit because it's pointless because she is unbelievably talented and brilliant and she seems to be a wonderful person and i really wish that she didn't feel like she had to do all that in the beginning because we would have loved her from the beginning if she hadn't yes, been yeah. if she hadn't been trying so goddamn this hard is, okay this is interesting tying like what we thought of her back then yeah to now because the, the the start of me, I tried to appreciate her before. Yeah. And this will make sense in a minute. But what made me appreciate her is because one time when I was came out here to San Jose to visit my mom, she wanted to go see A Star is Born. Oh, God, I remember. I remember yeah. you saying that. Oh, no, I take that back. No, we saw it in San Antonio when she was visiting me. Okay. Anyway. Mom wanted to go see A Star is Born. I, so still, we haven't, I still haven't watched that. Yeah. I should. And we went to see it. She blew me away. I know. I remember. And, you know, she wrote some of those songs. And her piano playing and her singing, it blew me away. And I was like, wow. Yeah. She's really fucking amazing. And... I don't know enough about her career because I have never cared enough to research it. Right. But, you know, in the movie, she's this great songwriter or singer that just plays the piano, which obviously that's who she is. Right. 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 And in the movie, she gets sucked in by this producer. Yeah. Yeah. That basically makes her into this stupid bimbo pop star. Right. Right. And her husband is like, what the fuck are you doing with this shit? What do you fucking need backup dancers for? What is this stupid shit you're singing about? Right. Because it so wasn't her. And it was just because, and I mean, I know that's an old story and that's that part of the storyline was not original. But it's like the today version of that kind of story. But it made yeah. me wonder about her because, oh, 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 oh. And in the middle of that, like I had seen videos of her online where she's just playing the piano and singing like the original vo- version of like Poker Face or, you know, the, the right. songs that were early hits of hers. Right. Um, and I remember at the time... I liked Born This Way. I loved that song. Yeah. And that's when I was watching Drag Race a lot. Oh, yeah. And I remember, do you remember that drag queen Delta? Delta yes. Burke? Yes. Delta Burke. Delta sang Bad Romance. And I'd never heard that song before because I don't listen to the radio and I right. didn't go to bars. And I, right. you know. But I fucking loved that song. And I was like, oh, that's Lady Gaga. So I remember, like, I illegally downloaded that song (laughs) and played the hell out of it. And because I liked the Born This Way song so much, I bought the Born This Way album. Right. Which is, like, I don't remember. I don't even have it anymore. I don't remember. But it's. I want to say it's 23 songs or something, and it should have been, like, nine Wow. Okay. It's a lot of fucking songs. And, you know, there's like an obligatory rock song in the middle of it. But other than that, pretty much every song sounds exactly the fucking same. Mm. And every other lyric on that entire fucking album is baby. Oh. Blah, 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 baby. I mean, every other fucking word on every song is baby. Oh, God. And I thought it was so gross. And I I just hated it. And it made me, and I started thinking, and I wonder if that's what happened to her. If some just producer got a little too much control. A hold of her and made her do this stupid synth pop shit. I don't to know. sort of like translate her piano songs 
into which would be popular. I wonder if that happened. Like I said, I, I, I've never done research on it because I didn't care enough. Right. But that was a theory, and I and I still don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And it's weird because she had so many fans back then, like people who just went nuts for that stuff, that I wonder if she... I don't think she's written an autobiography or anything at this point, but I wonder if she would ever, like how much time would have to go by before, if, if that was true, if somebody. Yeah. And like I said, I have yeah. no idea. That's right. just a but theory. But if it was true, I wonder how much time would have to go by before she would have felt comfortable saying that that was never her. Because so many people loved that shit. I mean, she became huge doing that shit. And, oh yeah, and it's you know, it 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 would be kind of weird to for her to be like, oh my god, I hated all that shit. You know, it would be kind of weird. Yeah, and to you know, and slap it's kind of funny too that because I just I recognize that a lot of it is my age. Oh yeah, I I absolutely recognize because that most music a... today is not for me, and, and I totally expect accept it. If I was a teenager and she came out with her outrageous costumes and all those synth pop dance songs, right? I would have thought it was the best thing in the whole world and I would have been I would have been a little monster. I would have been fanatical about her if I'd been like the gay teenager I was when right. Madonna was peaking. I totally would have been like that for Lady Gaga, but now Gaga would have found her way into the Marcus and Mona universe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's so funny now. I just, like, look at all of her outfits and stuff. I know when I was younger, I would have been like, oh, my God, how fabulous. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Right. Now, and even now that I really, really appreciate her as an artist now. Yeah. I still can't stand seeing her when she does any appearances because... Why does everything have to be couture and why does everything have to be so fashion and why does everything have to be a statement and why does every look have to be art? I just think it's stupid. It's always a little extreme. It's always like, it's like even when she was on, like when she was on American Horror Story Hotel, like all of her outfits we're fucking fabulous for the character she was doing, but I always hated her makeup. It was like her makeup was always like, are you trying to look cross-eyed? Like, what are you? Why do you, why do you not want to look prettier? Like, what isn't the point of makeup to look prettier? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And why I are they trying watched, to make you ugly? <laughs> I had watched every season of that show up until then. And, and she I annoyed started, you, yeah. I started watching that, and she annoyed me so much I stopped watching it. But I did eventually because we watch did, because, all of yeah, it because we did the show about, it. yeah. And yeah. I did enjoy it. But even now, like, she just, and I understand that she's in the, you know, the House of Gucci movie. So I kind of understand. I'm very excited about that. Her <laughs> promoting that. She needs to look couture, therefore right. look stupid. She's going very Gucci now. She needs to look stupid. But it's ridiculous how excited even I when I her. see her now and I just saw some article just from yeah. a few days ago with something and I was just like, yeah, I think that's oh why I'm seeing all these articles about her. Here right we go with this stupid high fashion, stupid fucking bullshit. I know. I know. And I mean, may, I think I'm just too old. But I just think it's fucking stupid. Yeah. I think the thing I'm going to enjoy just from the pictures I've seen from when they were making that movie, because they were releasing pictures from the set of her and Adam driver. And it was like this late seventies, early eighties looking high fashion jet setter shit. And I was just like, Oh, I'm so there for it. It was so, because it was so old school, ridiculous, giant sunglasses crap. And it was like, if it, oh, if, yeah. if it was current day, I'd be fuck you. But because it was old, it was like, it was taking me back. And it was like, okay, that's fabulous. You know, Adam Driver, cable knit sweater. I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I have a feeling 
I mean, I totally want to see it, but I do have a feeling, too, that it's probably not going to be flattering to the real-life people that it's oh. about. Oh, I'm sure it's not. Oh, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's going to be. Because you know when it comes down to it, they were just a bunch of drug-addicted, overly pretentious fuckheads. You know? Yeah. I mean, I... I, I, I would be genuinely surprised if the House of Gucci was a bunch of really, really nice people. I would I would be genuinely surprised if that oh, were the yeah. case. Because I, I really mean, don't maybe think... maybe that's the case, but yeah, I'm really interested to see. Yeah. I really don't think that people who are, you know, creating high art in the, in the, and, you know rubbing elbows with you know the the richest people in the world and whatever you know, i really and, don't think those people are our kind of people i know and maybe i'm just not a good gay because i think the fashion industry is so stupid it's so gross it's so pretentious i just hate it you know? yeah i think there's a lot i think there's i think there's a lot of of gays who will be interested in it only up to a point. But when it comes down to it, I think deep down, they think it's all stupid. I'm going to like it for its campy value. Oh, fuck. Yeah. You I know. mean, the campiness is really the only reason to like anything about rich people. So anyway, that's <laughs> going to be interesting. So it's like, you know, but seeing her, I think that I appreciate her as an artist now. Yeah. And I think that, she is sincere in her support and all of this and that. But there's some part of me that I still think she's stupid and pretentious. It's hard and to me, say. I could be wrong. But like I just said about Madonna, I'm sure she's a cunt. Oh, I think that goes without saying. Yeah. But that doesn't stop me from loving her. You know? I know. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's really hard. Anyway. Yeah. But the jury is out on Lady Gaga, but I'm starting to it's appreciate still, yeah, her. Yeah, it's still early. It's still <laughs> Whereas early. Whereas I, I, I appreciate yeah. her artistry now. I'm still yeah. on the fence about her and her sincerity. Yeah. I, I, I just think there's a little too much artifice and, and art for it to be really real. And can I, can I just say one other thing? I'm just... How much do you think it pisses off Madonna that Gaga is actually having an acting career? That oh, Madonna I'm sure it pisses her off. That Madonna yeah. could not have because she couldn't act her way out of a wet paper bag. Now she was good in Evita because she was basically just singing ninety five percent of the time. And just emoting in song. I mean, fuck, she, I can do that. She but... was actually really good in Evita, and I thought she would have probably been more praised for Evita had she not done those shitty fucking albums right before that, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, it's like, she... If I mean, did you... I mean, I actually watched Shanghai Surprise. I don't... I actually sat through that. I don't think I ever did. I, Only I because George watching, Harrison produced it and I was trying to be supportive of him. I watched, I remember seeing Desperately Seeking Susan. Yeah. But that was, um, she, she wasn't, you know, and what was the, um, um but she's basically oh, playing Dick herself. Tracy. Ugh, Dick Tracy. Oh yeah. No, that movie was shitty. Ugh. Um, God, what was the end? I remember a league of her of the league of their own. That was all right. Oh yeah, but she was. I mean, luckily there was. Luckily there was. That was sort of a cast of thousands. So she and there was didn't another. What other part. movie was she in? And I remember I just didn't see it. There was another movie she was in, and I just flat out didn't there was, see it. She I did one care. with her husband. She did. She did a Guy Ritchie movie. Um, wasn't it like there was like a plane crash or something? Like she was yeah, stranded I didn't on a see beach it, with someone. I just don't care. Yeah, I, I didn't either because it would have been horrible but that was supposed to be like her big no no she's really an actress now it's like no she really is not okay my dog's trying to dig a hole in the carpet what are you doing I, 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 yeah i don't think she could be an actress because i don't think she can ever get over herself and her own self-importance i think she always has to be her yeah because why why would someone why would anyone need 
to be anything other than her because yeah. her is all there is. You know, yeah. Anyway, kind of <laughs> sad that that's how that's. Yes. I think we're right. Yes. <laughs> for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers. stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Just relax, woman. You're fucking Madonna.